Okay. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Marek Palatinos. Uh, I maybe uh, maybe you know me as a slash on the Bitcoin forum, and um, uh, I've been working as uh, uh, in the banking industry for some uh, for some time as a um, software uh, ar archi architecture uh, in a software architecture department, and uh, I found uh, Bitcoin two years ago. And I founded the first uh, Bitcoin pool, which is uh, based on the calculating shares as a proof of work. Um, uh, today, uh, I, I, want to, I want to describe uh, some main problems uh, which I met during the uh, pool operation in the last uh, two years, and also propose some solution, uh, solution uh, uh, for them. Um, speakers uh, before me um, um, describe a uh, very wide uh, group of problems. I will be a bit uh, more specific, but I hope it will be uh, interesting. Um, can I ask you how many of you uh, are mining currently? Nice. Uh, how many of you are mining solo? Nice, thank you. Uh, so. Uh, you are not alone, definitely. There are thousands and thousands of people, uh, people around the world uh, who are using some kind of pool, maybe a peer-to-peer -peer pool, maybe some, uh, some other pool, like uh, my pool or DBIT or, or, or <laughs> 50DTC. Uh, the main problem is that the current solution uh, has been uh, introduced just as a workaround uh, there was a GetWork uh, protocol in a Bitcoin client, and I just uh, used it for, for creating a pool. Uh, when I did this, I, I didn't imagine that uh, it will be such a big, uh, uh, such big operation uh, in uh, two years uh, later. And uh, this solution has uh, many, uh, many uh, problems. So. Uh, in my first part, uh, in, in first part of my uh, presentation, I will talk about uh, uh, these problems and I will you know, propose some solutions how to fix it. So, the biggest problem of the uh, of current solution is that uh, uh, every work given by the server to the uh, miner must be spe specific. It's uh, just a part of the GetWork protocol. Uh, so. Uh, in the in the job given by the uh, by the pool is uh, just uh, one uh, num number small number which can be iterated over. It's uh, 30, 32 bit um, in size, so it fits uh, just to uh, four gigahashes uh, per second uh, per uh, one network. So with uh, 32 gigahash uh, mining rig, you will basically need uh, 10 of these uh, requests to the server and uh, 10, 10, of, uh, uh, 10 uh, time uh, response. Uh, so uh, this, this is the first big problem that the minor, uh, minor hash rate is bounded to, uh, to network load and, and uh, poor, uh, poor performance. And the second problem is that um, um, current uh, current uh, network protocol is uh, based on HTTP, which is uh, not so ideal for the mining because uh, the uh, the communication is done by uh, by clients. Uh, it's pretty good for web browsing, but it's uh, definitely not good for uh, for mining because uh, actually pool. Uh, has uh, enough information and he knows when the miner need a uh, new job. Uh, but uh, in current situation, miners are, are um, asking to, uh, to frequent the pool. Uh, they are overloading it uh, because of some application strategies and uh, it's a uh, hell to maintain, really. Uh, second, uh, third problem is, uh, is that uh, originally the GitHub it was just a polling solution. Miner asks every five, six, seven seconds for for new for new work, and uh, so Dbit uh, was the first who introduced long polling mechanism, which uh, which is a big problem in the scalability because uh, because it requires second connection to the pool. It's really hard to load balance it. Uh, we are using uh, something like. Uh, 
something like IP, IP hashes for load balancing or sticky sessions. Uh, it's uh, far from uh, ideal state. And also, um, there's uh, uh, there is, uh, clients are reconnecting after every long point broadcast. So uh, when um, uh, when a new block came, uh, came from the network, there is a real packet storm on the server every, basically every 10 minutes. Um, it's it's uh, pretty hard to uh, to fight against DDoS attacks because uh, because it's uh, really to, it's uh, hard to distinguish between re uh, real access by the miners and uh, by DDoS attackers as well. So the first possible solution uh, to fix the first problem with the uh, with the iterating nodes in uh, the get work response is just to increase the uh, size of, uh, uh, of the nonce uh, number. Um, this is a real problem uh, because uh, it, it uh, basically needs a change in the Bitcoin protocol itself because uh, the, uh, the thing what's uh, hashing on the minor side is part of the Bitcoin protocol. It's, uh, it's a block chain uh, block header used for, for the hashing. Uh, so, if we, if we uh, want to increase the um, uh, number of iterations in the block header, um, uh, it, uh, we basically uh, need to um, do a Bitcoin protocol hard fork, which is uh, really hard to maintain, and uh, there are some downsides of this solution. And I'm sure that this is not going to happen, because it's a really big problem. Uh, second, second um, Option is to move. Uh, is to um, well, what, what's what's going on the server when uh, when currently the uh, get work uh, get work request happen? Um, pool is uh, pool is increasing ex externals with special place in the Coinbase transaction, with uh, with the per, uh, with, which is the part of the uh, Merkle uh, Merkle tree. Uh, which is to unique uh, Merkle, uh, Merkle root, which is part of the blockchain, um, block header, I'm sorry. Uh, this uh, this uh, makes unique work for every miner. So the solution, uh, second solution, is to delegate this job outside of the pool directly to the miners. And uh, there are many problems with this. Uh, like uh, it's uh, clearly not, not not so easy to send all transactions to, to the miners. It's uh, against scalability issues, um, so it's not, not so easy to, to delegate all all this work as it is uh, right now. Uh, but it's possible to uh, send uh, send to miners a template of the Coinbase transaction. It's a special kind of transaction. I uh, want to des describe it uh, deeper right now. And uh, rehash uh, Merkle tree, uh, which uh, uh, it's it just 10, 10 hashes per, uh, per 1,000 uh, of uh, transactions, which are waiting for confirmation. And it's something like uh, 11 hashes for 2,000 um, transactions uh, waiting for confirmation. So it's uh, it's uh, scaling uh, log logarithmically, uh, not linearly or, or so. So there is a solution to uh, to uh, give uh, block um, macro branch and convey a template to the miners. Uh, they can now iterate the uh, new new number in the conveyance it itself, hash it over, and create unique transaction locally. Uh, this uh, scales much better, and uh, it's possible with my proposal, which I which I released this uh, this week, to uh, to uh, provide the work uh, over 18 exahashes per second per one connection. It's a really a high number. I'm pretty sure it, it will. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, enough at least for one next year. <laughs> um, um, so this this was the main uh, main uh, decision. Uh, it's a main improvement in in my proposal. Uh, but uh, there are other things what I want to change uh, together with with this change. 
uh, with, with the Coinbase uh, delegation. And uh, the main thing is to remove the HTTP, HTTP overhead and not calling completely. It's uh, clearly not, uh, not necessary. Opening one single uh, TCP uh, socket uh, by the miner is enough and it gives the pool uh, chan a chance to uh, notify miner directly when some, uh, some, something on the network happens, when there is a reorganization of uh, blocks or when new, uh, new block uh, came. came. Uh, it's very quick, there is uh, very low overhead and it uh, also enables some uh, smart strategies, uh, strategies for load balancing and mitigation to DDoS attacks. Uh, second thing is that um, in my proposal, uh, the load is completely driven by the server, not by miners. Miners just open the socket, subscribe uh, for receiving notifications, and they uh, receive some unique part of the coin base. It's unique uh, just for this miner. And the uh, rest is a uh, standard public subscribe mechanism. Uh, so when uh, broadcasting of, of new uh, work happen, uh, we'll, just, uh, we'll just create one, uh, one um, uh, string, one, uh, uh, it compiles one packet and send it to everybody. So there's very low overhead. It's it just uh, it's just broadcasting the single message over and over. By the way, this uh, this um, brings some new possibilities like creating uh, sub pools, uh, but it's out of the scope uh, of this presentation clearly. Um, and uh, the last last thing uh, which I had to decide is uh, the uh, protocol of the payload itself. And I decided to uh, stick with uh, JSON still. And I think that I have a uh, good reason for this. Um, first, first reason is that um, miners already have uh, external dependency for uh, JSON. Uh, almost every language supports uh, JSON internally without no external dependency. Um, and uh, it's uh, human readable, it's easy to, to debug. And, and the broadcast in, encoded in uh, JSON still fits uh, into one single uh, TCP, uh, TCP packet. Um, and it's not depending on the, on the um, speed of the miner itself. So it's, uh, it's like forever. The current status of my project, I, I call it uh, Stratum Mining because I re reused the, the, the protocol specification uh, from the Stratum pro protocol used uh, by Electrum uh, client, it's like lightweight uh, Bitcoin client. Uh, the current state of, uh, of my proposal is that uh, it's uh, already in production on my pool and on the uh, BTC uh, guild, and I know about at least two or three other pools considering to switch because the improvement is uh, is uh, is uh, really huge. Um, it. Um, uh, for, 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 for example, um, the stellar ratio uh, dropped from something around uh, half of the percent on my pool to 0.01% just by switching uh, the protocol and removing uh, such overhead regeneration of the unique long uh, responses. Um, uh, also, uh, there is, uh, there is uh, uh, open source uh, proxy uh, which enable mining uh, against the stratum, uh, stratum uh, pool for any current uh, Gator, uh, Gator miner. So it's already possible to test it out and uh, use, use this protocol. And uh, today will be announced the native, sub, uh, native support in EOCLBM miner. It's open scale miner uh, done by uh, Monkel, it's a friend of mine. And um, this week will be also released a uh, uh, new version of, of GUI miner, uh, which is used by thousands of uh, people mining on Windows. Um, all this stuff is open sourced. I even open sourced uh, my, uh, my codes, uh, which I'm running on the pool currently. Uh, it, it, it can be found on the GitHub page. And there's also a uh, protocol specification on my, on my pages and uh, I still, I still uh, need to uh, describe some, some corners, some edge cases a bit, but it's, uh, 
already a uh, possibility to use. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot for your talk. If the um, three speakers are still here, I wish to come up and answer questions. <coughs> we'll be ready to do so in about two minutes. instead of just pushing people towards uh, Peter's tool where they're calculating work locally themselves anyway? Uh, if you are asking me why this solution is better than Peter's uh, tool, um, well, I don't know. It's, uh, it's uh, just uh, another solution. Uh, I think uh, both, uh, both um, solutions have its, it's advantages, like uh, you probably are not uh, going to support PPS on the peer to pool, uh, peer -to -peer pool. so uh, both solutions are for different uh, kind of people. Okay. Um, do you have any uh, anything in your new protocol which uh, is to handle denial of service? Um, it's uh, much better to uh, to resist. Uh, uh, you, you mean DDoS attacks or? Sure, DDoS. Uh, yeah, DDoS is probably what I'm what I'm thinking. Because when I think about uh, denial of service, I immediately think, oh, let's do UDP and let's make them send some like little proof of work hash cache or something right away, or ban their IP. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, clearly uh, easier to handle such such kind of attacks uh, on on the TCP socket itself than on the HTTP uh, connections because uh, the um, miners can. Can switch. Uh, uh, it's 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 hard to distinguish uh, on the HTTP if it's a correct load or or not. Uh, you can clearly ban the IP address. No 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 problem. But uh, it's uh, easier to handle DDoS uh, directly on the routers with uh, TCP connections than uh, than uh, with uh, HTTP. Because uh, because uh, once uh, once the client is connected. Uh, uh, it's uh, it will connect for for a long time. Just the new clients will be unable to connect. Yes. Um, do you have any idea how the denial of services are coming from and what their motivation might be? No. <laughs> uh, I don't see any ec economic uh, economic uh, uh, reason why anybody. Uh, want to sh shut down just one or two pools. It, it even uh, doesn't uh, hurt the Bitcoin or the, uh, Bitcoin um, community itself. Uh, miners are not uh, tightly bonded to some uh, pool. They will switch under uh, in less than a day. It already happened. And I don't see any reason to attack the pools anymore. I mean, does anyone else have any ideas? Because it costs a lot of money to do a DNA analysis, doesn't it? Uh, cost of money to handle DDoS? No, no, it costs a lot of money to mount one, to, to, to create a denial of service attack. It's it seven, it's pretty cheap. So people must have reasons. 
Uh, actually, I, I expect uh, there are some script kiddies uh, which released some patch of the game with uh, some uh, some malware inside and they are just playing. According to last question, I, I, have, I have an idea. I think it may be the, uh, another mining corporation may be trying to destroy the another one, or it could be even some governments. Like, if government doesn't like the Bitcoin, they may try to destroy all the pools. Maybe it would be uh, an idea to destroy our, our work. So my question is to all of you guys. What do you think, what the future of Bitcoin mining will be? Will there be place for people like uh, students to mine at home, or will it be more like factories which mi which will mine in very very big buildings? Mm, it, it depends on the cost of ASIC hardware. If it, if, it, it will, if it will be easy to buy just a, a cup uh, warmer and connect it to the USB, I believe that people will mine around the world. Well, in, in general, I think that there are some scale issues to mining. I think a larger mining business would have some advantage over smaller ones. I, I don't like the IPT, but on the other end, indeed, if, if these ASICs do appear for a relatively low cost, uh, that would be nice. And the only other point to make is that most uh, modern mining software automatically switches pools if the pools are down, and so a DDoS to one pool is not really effective to most of the Bitcoin community. You'd have to DDoS everyone, and that's incredibly expensive. Uh, for, for the days of the DDoS attacks, so there are just me and uh, I think uh, DBIT. I, I, I had a uh, so I was uh, um, I had a so, so, um, it, it, it it was uh, likely some other poor wanted to bring some uh, some attention, but I don't think uh, it's uh, it's working anymore because uh, there, there are so so many uh, pools which are quite uh, balanced. So uh, I don't think that this uh, is uh, motivation for now. might be a technically naive question, but if in the future, rather than assume that governments were attacking Bitcoin, if some large bank or some large organization really liked Bitcoin and got involved, what would happen if, for example, Citibank were to say, oh, this is great, get involved, build a really large mine in their uh, center, and then perhaps do something like all their clients, all the Citibank users, give them their own Bitcoin client. Would down the road, like an uh, organization like Citibank, for example, be able to have more control over the protocol if they were to have more users? Well, it, it depends uh, on uh, on the cost of hardware again. But I think that uh, that uh, when I six will will be between people normally, uh, it will be very very hard to overtake the network just by single organization. So, is your question whether a large organization that uh, amounts uh, a high amount of uh, hashing power, over 51%, whether they could enforce new rules on, on the protocol? Yeah, essentially. Um, and if, if they had more, like, like a more computing power, but not in, a, in an aggressive way, but more that they say, oh, we would like to do this sort of change, and then more users, just because perhaps all okay. their... So the, the, the potential attacks for uh, a single entity which has more than half of the hashing power of the network are pretty known, I think, so there, there's, they can do arbitrarily uh, stop transactions they don't like. Uh, if it goes over 50%, they are able to rewrite parts of the of history of the of the blockchain, um, they can also make sure no other nodes are able to mine anymore because they, they just only build on their own blocks. 
Um, but they can't create invalid <laughs> transactions, or they, they, I mean, there are some uh, interesting attacks possible, but uh, if your question is really about changing the protocol, no, every relaying node, every full node on the network still enforces all rules, so if they would say, no, no, we're not going to follow and we'll, we'll use our own rules, they would instantly create a fork in the network between them and the rest. If they have a very strong economic power, they might convince other people in the network to also switch to their software, but at that point it's not Bitcoin anymore, they're just running their own fork, I guess. Um, I have one last question for Jeff. Could you just say a, a word about uh, how far you got with PyBond and what way you think that's going to be released and where it's going to go? Well, the, uh, the P2P and DHT uh, basics are in place, so the, uh, there should be an actual bond transaction in the next week appearing on testing. But uh, it's just the very, very basic, includes a bond descriptor and to whom it's paying and that sort of thing. There's uh, the pay to policy stuff, which is very, very interesting, and I hope to collaborate with some other people on as, uh, in the more distant future. Hello, uh, I would like to know who, who can reverse the transaction and in which ways, because this is not very clear for me. I know that one of the answers you just gave, the 51% hashing power must be reached, but there are so, other ways for reversing the transaction as long as uh, the mining is not uh, done by, by a single soul. Uh, so, yes, in very short term, so there's always a potential for a short fork in a blockchain, so where two miners build on the same parent block and they might include different transactions which may conflict with each other. Uh, that re almost requires buggy, so it, it requires buggy software or malicious intent uh, to do so, but um, at that point it, it's possible that there are actually two candidates for what is the blockchain going to be. And if one gets extended, the other one is reversed, even though some people might have seen one confirmation in the other chain. But the, the idea behind Bitcoin is that the chance for such a reversal drops exponentially if the number of confirmation goes up. And there's some uh, calculation in the Satoshi's paper about Bitcoin where he says uh, six confirmations is probably enough. So, uh, but that depends on, on I mean, the state of the network. Given what we've learned from the development of the Bitcoin community and transaction history so far, if we were going to re-architect it going forward, if that were theoretically possible, what are the learnings that we've made and what are the one or two things that would be high on each of your agendas to improve going forward? Would you de-link the uh, size of the community to hardware or you know, is, there, is there anything architecturally that you would change based on what we've done so far? Um, um, there are some things, I mean, if, if we re really have the ability to say, okay, we're going to change the protocol anyway, we like and we start from scratch, that, that's not a feasible thing. It, it's a lot harder to, to do upgrades, but um, if, if we had that possibility to, to do that immediately, there worth some things I've changed, but uh, they're, they're more technical. I, I, sorry if it's not, not really an answer, but... Um, uh, Look on the uh, wiki at the hard fork wish list. Yeah, exactly. There, there's a list uh, on, on the Bitcoin wiki with changes that some people would like to see in the protocol. Uh, I think one... Uh, one thing, and I'm not, I don't know a lot about it, but I think one thing that we've learned from all of the forks of Bitcoin that have happened over the past couple of years is that Satoshi, is that Satoshi really got a lot of the variables right, or the constants right, when he put them there. Because people said, ah, oh, we'll have shorter blocks, and we'll have easier mining, and we'll have, we'll, we'll solve all these problems, and then they all, well, a lot of them just crashed and burned. Well, 
Um, I think that's just network effect in a sense. I think if the block time would have been on average three minutes instead of ten minutes, and that would have been first, we would still have blocks of three minutes. Uh, it's not to say that, that he got things wrong or, or anything, but uh, I don't think the reason you give uh, is evidence that he chose everything optimally. You talked about the multi-signature transactions. Uh, can you explain more how this should be used in an exchange? For example, is it um, possible to do such a thing that an exchange has one key and the user on the account has the other key and both of them have to sign to withdraw? So, like, a theft of, of the whole wallet of the exchange does not allow to withdraw anything because it still needs the other key from, from the customer? Well, a full answer would be, I think, out of, outside the scope of this discussion, but basically multi-sig requires uh, M of N keys to be uh, valid in order to uh, cash in that transaction. And so that can be uh, one exchange has one key and then an offline server has another key that's slotted by an employee, or there's a second server which is on a totally different network. Um, there, there are a whole, just a long list of combinations of things that you can do with uh, multi-city. So, uh, you know, I'd, I'd suggest just, uh, yes, the answer is yes. Uh, but, uh, get, you know, get together with us uh, after the talk and we can, we can go into more technical detail. And from which version of the client is it implemented? Um, Multisig was in the original Satoshi client. It was uh, only made a standard relayable transaction uh, in the past year. But if you have a remotely recent reference client, then it should support it. Like 0 06? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Right. I'm curious about the opinion of the audience also of using the blockchain for any other purpose than uh, storing. Don't do it. <laughs> Please. It's not an instant messaging protocol. It's a currency. It's a very complex, expensive, and cumbersome way to send messages. There are a lot of easier ways to do it, and expensive. Please, please use projects like Namecoin, which are uh, really secure because they share the difficulty of the of the Bitcoin network mostly, and they are supposed to be uh, for such applications. I have a question. Uh, on the Bitcoin forums, there was recently a pre-announcement that the Bitcoin project will make an announcement in September. <laughs> Is something going to happen on this conference or will it be later? We will be announcing the real identity of Satoshi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Questions? Lunch? Oh, right. Yeah. Well, we've got two, two more minutes, so if there's no more questions, we'll take the early um, and our lunch break, and we 